A very good evening, students. So welcome to Stray Stuff for CA and CMA. In this session, we are going to discuss about May 2022 FM question paper analysis, financial management question paper analysis. Right, sir. Sir, uh, this attempt, May 2022, Financial Management and Economics for Finance. That is your paper number eight of CA Inter. Sir, it is, uh, I can say that it's a very easy exam. The question paper was very easy. And uh, majority of the questions have been asked from the you know, the material which we have discussed in our regular classes. And that you are going to be witnessed within 20 to 30 minutes. Right, sir. So let us see uh, question number one. Question number one is given from the chapter ratios analysis. Ratio analysis. Right, sir. Uh, and it, it was asked for five marks, right? And uh, you can see uh, you are provided with the information of equity share capital, reserves and surplus to shareholders funds, sales to shareholder funds, current ratio, debtors turnover ratio, stock velocity, gross profit ratio, net working capital turnover ratio. So you are required to calculate the shareholders funds, stock, debtors, current liabilities and cash balance. Right, sir. So first of all, uh, let me clear you one thing. This is only a brief analysis of the question paper, not the detailed discussion of the answers to each and every question. Okay, now, so the detailed analysis of the question paper with the suggested answers, I will do another video. I will do another video within a couple of days. So initially, this is only a brief analysis of our question paper. Clear now, right? So, and uh, yeah, this ratios analysis problem, uh, we got a similar problem and we have discussed a similar problem in our regular classes. Uh, this is our ratios analysis chapter material, ma, right? So you can see here, uh, it is similar to this problem number seven, sir, ratios analysis, which we have discussed in uh, our regular classes. Right, sir. So here also you provided with the information of, uh, you know, the similar information which you got in the question. And finally, you asked to find out whatever you asked to find out here, the shareholders fund stock, debtors, current liabilities and cash balance. The same questions we have done here, the current liabilities. Right, sir. Current liabilities, stock, debtors, cash. Okay, now. The only difference is that here we got the shareholders funds directly in the question but in the in the examination question we asked to find out the shareholders funds but in our regular classes whatever we have discussed in our main material the shareholder funds is given sir rest the question is same okay now right so if you have prepared this problem number seven thoroughly this problem number one of the may 2022 question paper is very easy sir okay now next Question number B, uh, it is from the chapter working capital management, working capital management, where we have discussed a concept called maximum permissible banking finance, tandem committee recommendations. Do you remember, sir? Tandem committee recommendations, right? So where we have studied three methods, right? So you can see here. Balance sheet of X limited is given, sir. And uh, then calculate the amount of the maximum permissible banking finance, MPBF, under the three methods as per the tandem committee lending norms. The total core current assets are assumed to be 30 lakhs. Do you remember the formulas? Method 1.75 percentage, right, of the current assets minus current liabilities. Method 2.75 into current assets minus current liabilities. And method 3.75 into current assets minus core current assets minus current liabilities. Do you remember the formula? Right. So it's a very simple problem. And the same problem we got in our stress material with 
the same numbers also let me uh, check you to that problem sir uh, that we have discussed in working capital management uh, uh, you know as problem number 25 uh, let me check you there yeah here it is the concept of working capital limits likely to be approved by the banks concept of maximum permissible banking finance Tandon come to introduce the concept of MBBF, where you can see the three methods, formula 0.75 into current assets minus current liabilities and method 2.75 of current assets minus current liabilities and method 3.75 of current assets minus core current assets minus current liabilities. Right, sir. And here you can see the problem number 25. Problem number 25, same problem you got in the May 2022 as question number 1B even with the change uh, you know same amounts also you can check it out sir you can check it out right so the total core current assets is given 30 lakhs you can see here the total of the core current assets are assumed to be 30 lakhs next and you can see the balance sheet fixed assets 500 fixed assets 500 and then inventory raw material 100 working progress 150 and finished goods 75 so raw materials 150, 100 and uh, 50. Actually here the total of the stock is given uh, 300 ma. In our material we have taken 325, 325. Only the finished goods. Here it is mentioned as uh, 50 and here it is mentioned as 75. That's the only change. And you can see the debtors and the cash again the same, right? Almost just 125 here. We have taken there 100. Okay now. And the total of the balance sheet you can see 980, 980. Okay, now, and look at the share capital, 200, read and earnings, 200, debentures, 300, so 200, 200, 300, 180, 100, you can see, 180, 100. Same problem set. So those who have done this problem number 25, we have done only one problem under MPBF, and that one problem straight away asked in the main exam. Are you following, sir? Every one of you. So five marks, very, very easy. Okay, a straightforward question from our straight star material. Next, 1C. 1C is actually, sir, frankly speaking, this concept, this problem also from the chapter uh, working capital management. In working capital management, there is a concept called inventory management. And frankly speaking, we have not discussed inventory management in this chapter. Because, you know, inventory management, you will discuss in your uh, cost accounting, in your cost accounting subject uh, under the chapter materials costing. In the materials costing, you have a concept called EOQ, economic ordering quantity, economic ordering quantity. So the same concept, again, we have under the chapter working capital management with the title inventory management. That is why while I'm discussing the working capital management chapter, when it comes to when it comes to the inventory management topic, right? Uh, do you remember, sir? I have told that this inventory management topic covered under the cost accounting subject. Hence, I am not discussing here. Yes or no? Right, sir. But anyhow, the concept of EOQ we will be discussed again in the chapter working capital management, but in a different manner, cash management models. Do you remember, sir? In the cash management topic, we have discussed Baumol's model, miller or model. Under Baumol's model, Baumol's model is similar to EOQ concept. When you are discussing about the inventory, it is EOQ. When you are discussing about the cash, it is Baumol's model. Square root of 2A over by C. Do you remember the same concept? Even if you remember the concept of the Baumol's model, the formula, the logic, right? You can do this problem or else anyhow, you will be having the knowledge of EOQ. You might have learned in your uh, cost accounting subject under the chapter materials costing. So yet another very easy question sir, for five marks. Next, 1D. Sir, 1D uh, is from the chapter risk analysis and capital budgeting decisions. Risk analysis in capital budgeting decisions. Somehow this, I can say that, uh, you know, a kind of uh, out of, uh, uh, you know, 
out of expectations right because from the chapter risk analysis in capital budgeting decisions generally we will expect equations from the uh, you know uh, risk adjusted discounting rate methods uh, generally we will expect the question from the certainty equivalent factors method or from the topics of probability distribution standard deviation variance coefficient of variance right sir generally we don't expect a question from the topic sensitivity analysis simulation decision tree analysis right because this sensitivity analysis simulation decision tree analysis these are final level topics even at our ca interlevel we have discussed only one problem with respect to sensitivity analysis and the same problem you got in your main exam luckily right though it is out of expectation but the only problem we have done under sensitive analysis model the same similar kind of problem you got in your main exam so let me show you the problem sir in our stress term material uh, come to page number 126 yeah where uh, we have discussed the concept of sensitivity analysis and in that problem number 13 you can see yeah problem number 13 so where you have initial capital cost annual unit sales selling price per unit variable cost per unit fixed cost per year and discounting rate and find out the impact on the projects in pv uh, of a 2.5% adverse variance in each variable and which variable having a maximum effect you can also see here measure the sensitivity of the project measure the sensitivity of the project uh, to change in the initial project cost and annual cash inflows right so here we asked to determine the sensitivity analysis only with respect to two variables one the cash outflow annual initial project cost and two annual cash inflows considering each factor at a time such that npv becomes zero and identify which of the two factors is the most sensitive okay now similar problem we have done here in the problem number 13 sir right the explanation the logic is same so if you have the knowledge of problem number 13 you can do this very easily okay now one day you can do very easily next coming to the problem number 2 uh, details of the company is given and you asked to you, you know this question is from the chapter leverages one of the most in, uh, easiest chapters from the financial management leverages where we have only three formulas operating leverage contribution divided by ebit financial leverage ebit divided by ebt and combined leverage contribution divided by ebt end of the chapter yes or no right sir so a very straight forward question you have uh, you have been asked so you can see here determine the return on equity sorry return on capital employed and eps does the company have a favorable financial leverage first you need to find out the financial leverage and basing on that you need to conclude you need to make a decision and then you are asked to find out the operating and combined leverages so that means in total you have to find out financial leverage operating leverage combined leverage then the percentage change in ebit if sales increases by 10 percentage so the relationship between the sales and ebit explained under operating leverage right sir so anyhow we are finding out the operating leverage in point number 3 basing on which you can do the answer for point number 4 at what level of sales your ebt becomes zero reverse back calculations you can do sir yes or no the same problems we have done in our stress term materials uh in practice also we have done in examples also we have done okay now next uh, let me show you that uh, problem here uh, we have seen in the i think uh, problem number uh, 12 here you can see right what is the firm's return on investment return on capital employed okay now does it have a favorable financial leverage does it have a favorable financial leverage return on capital employed and then operating financial and combined leverages of the firm all the three leverages you asked to find out so all the three leverages right sir and at what level of sales the ebt will be equals to zero at what level of the sales your ebt will be equals to zero are you following now same question similar question i cannot say same because the numbers are different but similar question similar type of the question 
so if you have the knowledge of this problem number 12 now you can do this problem very easily how many marks am i it's been asked for 10 marks a question from leverages for 10 marks so i can say that attempt financial management paper is very easy <laughs> see if you got a question from leverages right sir so it's an easy question obviously and it is asked for 10 marks are you following now see basically financial management is for 60 marks amma out of 60 marks anyhow 12 to 14 marks is for theory is for theory the sixth question we are going to discuss okay now and out of 60 marks your problematic portion is hardly for 45 to 48 marks out of 45 marks 10 marks is from the easiest chapter of the uh, subject so that means you can consider this paper is very easy so that's why at the beginning of the chop, uh, discussion, I've already said you, this attend FM paper is very, very easy. Hence proved, uh, right. Okay, ma, next one. Question number three. Yeah, question number three, uh, I can say is a little bit difficulty question. Uh, it is from the chapter investment decisions. It is from the chapter investment decisions where the question is being asked uh, under the method NPV. You have given a project, ma, right? You need to evaluate this project. You need to find, find out the NPV of this project and basing upon the NPV of the project, you need to make a decision. Are you following? It's a lengthy problem and a big difficulty problem. From the entire financial management paper of May 2022, this problem number three is somewhat, somewhat difficult, not highly difficult, not highly difficult because similar type of the problem we have done in our regular material, regular classes. Do you remember, sir, there is a team of consultants coming to visit, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, that kind of problem we have done, right? Uh, uh, the management is worried about their accommodation expenses. So then the management of is of thinking of consult, uh, constructing, constructing, uh, you know, a building for their accommodation and conducting for uh, meetings, everything. So thereby we can reduce the accommodation expenses. Thereby we can reduce the meeting expenses. Right. So here also the same kind mom. here, the company wants to introduce the AI, artificial intelligence, right, while making the computers. Here, the person is a manufacturer of computers. So it wants to introduce AI. So whereby after introducing the AI, obviously there will be some savings. So that savings would be your cash inflow somehow. So the estimated annual savings from the introduction of AI is as follows. Reduction of five employees with annual salaries of three lakhs each. This is a cash inflow. Right, operating cash inflow, reduction of three lakhs in production delays caused by inventory problem, yes, cash inflow, reduction in loss sales, cash inflow, you know, gain due to timely billing, cash inflow, these are all your cash inflows. Then you have to look after your cash outflows. What is the cost of installation of AI? What is the installation cost? And how we are going to pay them 80% in the year of purchase and remaining will be in the next year. What is the life of the system and how we are going to depreciate it? And what is the cost of operating that new system? Are you following now? So when you're going through the problem, it becomes very easy, sir. But a bit lengthy. I cannot say it is highly difficult. It is a bit difficult, a bit lengthy, but that's it. Out of the 10 marks of this question now, you can comfortably score up to six to seven marks. Comfortably. Are you following, sir? Every one of you. Next. Problem number four, the particulars relating to Raj Limited. So this question is from the chapter capital structure. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. The above mentioned alternatives, would you recommend for Raj Limited with reference to EPS, assuming a corporate tax rate of 40 percentage? This is from the chapter capital structure. Ma. In the capital structure, not the very first model we have done EBIT EPS analysis in the chapter capital structure, the very first model we have done EBIT EPS analysis under the given financing alternatives. Suppose that in this question, you can see uh, you have given by three financing alternatives under the three financing alternatives. You have to calculate EPS, the financing alternative 
under which the EPS is hired that should be selected? Yes or no? Right. So the same kind of problem we have done in our material also. So in our material now, come to page number 47. In 47, you can see uh, it is similar to problem number two. More. Similar to problem number two. Right. You can see here, uh, what is the capital requirement, sir? This is our existing capital structure. Uh, sorry, uh, this is our output, selling price per unit, fixed cost. This is our existing capital structure. Share, equity share capital, reserves and surplus, and current liabilities. And then what is the funds required? So expansion project, uh, the, it will involve 20 lakhs and company expects to increase in the output by 50%. Fixed cost will increase by 5 lakhs. Variable cost per unit decreased by 15%. Okay, now. And the financing alternative. So you need 20 lakhs. Kadama. Financing alternative one, debt, 5 lakhs. Balance, and 15 lakhs through equity shares. Debt, 10 lakhs. And equity shares, 10 lakhs. Debt, 14 lakhs. And equity shares, 6 lakhs. Total put together in the cinema, 20 lakhs in each financing alternative. So financing alternative one through date, you are raising five lakhs. The balance 15 lakhs you have to raise through by issuing the equity shares. So same model we have done here. We require 25 lakhs a month for the new plant. Are you following? And you have three financing alternatives, right? First one by raising a debt of 2,50,000. So out of 25 lakhs, you are raising through debt. 2,50,000 remaining 22,50,000 you have to raise through equity alternative two by debt you are raising 10 lakhs and the remaining 15 lakhs you have to raise through equity alternative three by issuing the debt you are raising 150 lakh, uh, 15 lakhs the remaining 10 lakhs you have to raise by equity shares the balance in each case by issuing the equity shares are you following sir every one of you Okay, now, so the same problem and even the rate of interest also, you can see slab rate of interest, slab rate wise interest rate or borrowed is as follows. In the same problem, you can see the slab rate of interest. The funds can be borrowed at the rate of 10% up to 2,50,000 at 15% over and about 2,50,000, but up to 10 lakhs at 20% over 10 lakhs. So same model now, 10%, 15%, 20%. .20%. Clear everyone. So same problem here, but the only changes are changing in the numbers. So if you have done this problem number two thoroughly in our Stresta material, this problem number four of May 2022 question paper, very, very easy, sir. 10 marks again, 10 marks again. The very first model, you might have thoroughly prepared this pro model, sir. Okay, now, so basically at the end of the chapter, whatever the models are there, we might left it. See, in the same chapter, uh, capital structure at the end of the chapter, you have a model called arbitrage. I bet 90% of the students might have left that arbitrage while they are preparing. You can see here, model number four is arbitrage. That's the last model of this chapter. You can check it out. After that, you will have the solutions, printer solutions. So 90% of the students might have left that concept of arbitrage for the main exams preparation. Yes or no? But 90% of the problem I can bet that might have done this first model. Clear. Next. Question number 5A. Uh, 5 is uh, from the chapter cost of capital. From the chapter cost of capital. Where you asked to find out the cost of redeemable debentures and cost of preference shares. Cost of convertible debentures and cost of preference shares. The first paragraph information is with respect to cost of, uh, you know, convertible debentures. The second paragraph is with respect to cost of preference shares. Okay, now, so the same problem we have done in our test material again uh, from the chapter cost of capital. Come to the page number 35, Emma. Page number 35, problem number six, you can see. Yeah, here you can see, Ma. We have already discussed a, a model called cost of convertible dementures, right? And problem number six. Okay, now. A company issued 10,000 15% convertible debentures of 100 rupees each with a maturity period of five years. Here also you can see, ma, right? 15% convertible debentures 100 rupees each at par with a maturity period of six years. 
on maturity each debenture will be converted into two equity shares of the company in our book we discussed on maturity debenture holders will have the option to convert the debentures into equity shares of the company in the ratio of 1 is to 10 and they will get 10 shares for one debenture okay now and then the risk free rate of return 10% uh, the information is provided to you then you asked to find out the cost of convertible debentures so here also we asked to find out the cost of convertible debentures clear now every one of you right next see in our problem now i have given you the current market price of the equity share directly but in this may 2022 exam paper now in order to find out that market price you have provided with the information of risk premium beta factor dividend everything clear next after that preference shares ma with respect to preference shares now you can see here uh, you asked to find out under the yield to maturity model ydm 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 anna irr method anna okate sir yield to maturity model anna internal rate of return method anna present value method anna one and the same only okay now right so for the calculation of the cost of preferences, we have two methods, amma. approximate method that is shortcut method and IRR method. IRR method is also known as yield to maturity model. Yes or no? Right. No. Now coming to this problem number eight, the same, uh, you know, 5% preference shares of 100 rupees each premium of 10% redeemable after 10 years at par flotation cost 6%. You can also see here in our problem number eight. 10% preference shares of 100 rupees each. Right, sir. And redeemable at the end of the 10th year from the date of issuance of the shares. Say a similar problem, no? problem number eight. So you, if you have done this problem number six here under cost of redeemable uh, convertible debentures and problem number eight under preference model. No? So then in that case, the problem number uh, the question number five of May 2022 will be very easy for you. Clear. Next. Problem number six, as expected, theory questions. Here. As expected, theory question. So the first question is uh, identify the limitations of internal rate of return, IRR method. The limitations we have discussed two times. One, uh, in investment decisions model. Two, in uh, advanced concepts and investment decisions model and three at the time of theory discussion as well. Okay now, so limitations of IRR, let me take you to our material ma. So come to page number 112, where you can see the concept of modified IRR, right? So while we discussing the concept of modified IRR, the first concept to be discussed is why we are, you know, there is a need for modified IRR. What are the major drawbacks limitations of the conventional IRR. You can see here, there are several convention uh, limitations attached with the conventional IRR. The modified IRR addresses some of these deficiencies. Example, eliminating the multiple IRR rates. It addresses the reinvestment rate issues. Okay, now, every one of you. So with this knowledge, you can write the answer for the six years very, very easily. Right. Next, explain briefly the assumptions of Walter's model. Again, you can come to our material. It's a direct uh, question. Page number 135, Walter's model. Assumptions. You have three points. If you write these three points, the four marks are very easy. The assumptions of Walter's model. Okay, now, every one of you straightforward question for four marks and then state the advantages of wealth maximization right again uh, this we have discussed in our theory material ma advantages of uh, wealth maximization you can come to page number six right so here you can see the question explain as to how the wealth maximization objective is superior to profit maximization objective right and here you can see in the problem number 12 wealth maximization concept and advantages. Easy to calculate the profits, easy to determine the link between the financial decisions and profits. It emphasizes the long-term gains, recognize the risk or uncertainty, recognize the timing of returns, consider shareholders returns. End of the answer, four marks. Okay, now it's again a straightforward question. Clear, sir. 
I have already mentioned it as a very important question because you can see how many times it's already asked in the previous exams. Next, the last one, distinguish between ADRs and GDRs, American deposit receipts and global deposit receipts. This question also we have straight away discussed in our uh, uh, material map. Come to page number 34. Here you can see, write a short notes on ADRs and DGRs or uh, you can see, yeah. The concept of the American depository receipts and global depository receipts. Here we have discussed in a points format, ma, the same points, if you mention in a tabular format, that will be the differences. So left hand side ADRs, point number one, two, three, four, and right hand side GDRs, point number one, two, three, four. End of the answer. Okay, now it's again yet another straightforward question. So almost I can say out of the 60 marks of the financial management paper of May 2022, confidently I can say that 50 plus marks are from our from our stress time material, sir. And you have witnessed already since last 25 minutes. Since last 25 minutes. Are you following, sir? Every one of you. Right? So hope you have done your exams very well, both the groups, group one and group two, right? So I wish you very all the best for your results. And uh, I wish you to see you again in CA final classes. Okay, ma. So till then, have a good day, sir, and good night.